Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 5th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It was a bit over a week ago that Cisco released a patch for CVE 2020-3452. This was the directory traversal vulnerability in its adaptive security appliance and firepower threat defense. Now, pretty much immediately after the patch was released, there were some reports of exploit attempts in the wild. No big surprise, the exploit is rather trivial. We primed our honeypots to basically look for these exploit attempts. And yes, we are seeing some, but uh, actually very few. It's uh, just at the rate of a couple a day. And at this point, we only see essentially checks whether or not a particular system is vulnerable, uh, no exploit attempts where they're actually trying to read confidential files. This could in part be due to our honeypot not very well emulating uh, this vulnerability. So maybe we are just not seeing the additional exploit attempts after the initial uh, detection. And recently we had a couple of high profile DNS outages that were essentially caused by misconfiguration. This week we had Telstra in Australia. A few weeks, I think it was ago, we had Cloudflare having some issues. And one thing that sort of became obvious there is that there are a few large DNS providers that are really sort of covering a large part of the internet or the domains. Now, the two outages that I mentioned were in part the authoritative name servers, but also recursive name servers. Now, I took a closer look at authoritative name servers by essentially parsing through some of the top level domain zone files. Looked at about, I think it was 400 million records. That's about how many domains were in these files. And well, it turns out it doesn't look good. Shouldn't really surprise anybody. Looked a bit worse than I thought it should look in that there are only 2,300 approximately name servers that are covering about 80% of the domains out on the internet. So that's about 0.084% responsible for 80% of the internet, far more than you would sort of usually expect as this good old Pareto principle that's often quoted where, well, you would expect 20% of the, of the name servers serving 80% of uh, the domains, but we are way beyond this. And yes, it's really a very small sort of a handful of entities that are ultimately responsible for most domains out there. What I haven't looked yet at is how many of these services are, for example, using the same cloud infrastructure. And uh, there are other issues like this that may actually make uh, this concentration even worse. Well, what can you do about it? Not much, really. Uh, Don't make it worse. Uh, Try to keep copies of your zone files. Yes, most of us, myself too, are using one of those big DNS providers because, well, in the end, they work and they're easy to use, but have a backup plan in case your DNS provider is going down. And like with all cloud services and the like, uh, don't become a hostage of the service. Uh, Have a plan also how to exit and move your domains uh, to a different service. Even if it's painful, at least if you have a plan, you could potentially move. And then we got our August updates from Google for Android. Uh, Nothing too exciting other than one vulnerability that's specific to Qualcomm chipsets. And that's in their uh, wireless LAN, in their 811 drivers. One of those classic vulnerabilities in these drivers uh, where they are allocating a fixed size buffer because probably the specification states that this is what that particular message is supposed to be like, but then it ex- accepts other length messages as well, which will then lead to a very classic buffer overflow. So this is potentially exploitable since there have been similar issues, in particular with WPA and such in the past, also with the 
SSID. There have been uh, buffer overflows years ago that uh, sort of followed a similar pattern. The only reason this may be a little bit more difficult to exploit is that the buffer overflow is actually in the association response. So I'm not 100% sure how this would then actually be exploited in the wild. But hey, let's have the exploit writers surprise us and see what they can come up with. And remember, checkmate and check rain, these recent exploits against iOS that allowed for a jailbreak. Well, it looks like Team Pangu, which came up with these older exploits, has found a new one and they claim it's unpatchable. Apparently a vulnerability in Apple's secure enclave. That's uh, the sort of core root of trust that's being used by iOS. And it appears to also affect iOS 14, which of course at this point is just out in beta. But according to Team Pango again, this is not patchable in software. And well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.